Hey y'all, this is Joe out here at the cabin at St. Bernard Acres. Uh, let's see, this is Saturday the 15th of August. And I have a green board. <laughs> I actually have a piece of, of scrap plywood that I painted green real quick. And all of the solar components and wiring I'm going to put on this board. I'm going to figure out where to put everything. Hopefully it all fits on this. I think it will. Uh, and I'll hook up everything except the panels uh, today. Um, I'll get the battery hooked up. I'll get this mounted on the wall. By the time I'm done, everything will be wired in here except for the solar panels. Um, and I'll have it ready to hook them up uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be doing much for testing today because it's raining and it's supposed to rain most of the weekend and be cloudy and overcast so you know it's a good day to get all this set up I apologize for the light because like I said it is cloudy and all I have is that one light there to uh, work off of but I'm going to try to put this stuff where I want it get it all mounted then make all the wires that I need to make and try to explain how all of it works once I get done but let me start playing with this I'll be back All right, I'm back. Hopefully you can see. <laughs> uh, I'm getting ready to uh, um, hook up all the batteries now. I've got all this stuff. I'll go through it here directly and get light. I'm trying to get some light in here. It's not doing very good, but I'll work on it. Getting ready to hook all the batteries up now. I've made all the cables, as you can see, except for the um, cable that's going into that switch right there for the inverter coming out of the battery for the inverter and the negative cable that's going to go to the bus bar I've got to make that I have the cable right there the uh, coming out of the charge controller ready um, I just got to get it on the negative cable on the bus bar. But three of these batteries, well, what I'm going to wind up with is series parallel. Each pair of batteries is going to be in series. So two 12 volt batteries in series becomes a 24 volt battery. So I'll basically have three 24 volt batteries. Then I'll run those three in parallel. And I'll wind up with uh, 345 amp hours at 24 volts. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, and we'll see how that works out. But I'm going to go ahead and hook up all the batteries. And then I'll take the camera off the tripod and give you a rundown on how everything's working. I'll be back. Alright, this is Sunday morning. And... I got everything hooked up. I'm going to do a couple of things before I walk through the whole process of what I've done so far. The solar panels are not hooked up yet. Uh, just everything in here is. The only thing left to do is to run the wires from the panels into that circuit breaker and into the charge controller. But I'm going to turn the power on to the inverter and turn it on and see if that's working so you get to experience this with me <laughs> 
And if I don't put up a video, that means it didn't work. And again, sorry for the lighting. I mean, it's very cloudy outside. Uh, that's the best I can do. So I flip this on. Okay, nothing blew up. I don't smell anything. I don't see any smoke. <laughs> so that's a good sign. So let's turn the inverter on and see if I get an error or anything. Okay, that could be an error. Oh, alright. That's pretty good. And there's no load. And there's nothing coming in. I mean, I don't have anything plugged in. And I don't have the solar panels hooked up. But the battery bank is sitting there at 25.5. That's what I wanted to see. Awesome. And again, I don't see anything smoking. <laughs> I don't smell anything burning. Wires are not hot. All right. So that part works. Yeah, I can live with 25.5. I have never touched these batteries. I mean, it's just the way they came from Walmart. So, all is good. Let me turn this off now. And I can kill the battery to it again. Or isolate the batteries. Because I'm not using it. Cool. Alright. Alright, boys and girls. This is Sunday morning, um, August 16th. I've got all of this set up now. Everything is working. Uh, the only thing left is to run the solar panels into the charge controller. So, I'm going to go through everything I've done so far. And see if I can, you know, let you know how simple it was. It took a lot longer than I thought, uh, especially making all these cables. Uh, holy crap. It took a while. But I'm glad I did it. I have a better understanding now. It got pretty late last night when I was doing it. Because I had to keep referring to notes and pictures and books and... All kinds of crap to make sure I was doing all this right. I am not, and this is my disclaimer, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a solar technician, I'm none of that. I'm just trying to put this together for myself uh, and show you guys what I do, not how to do it. That's the difference. Um, over here you see, that's my number six wire for the solar panels to be bringing them in and all of my parts and tools I mean holy crap there's a lot to do this but uh you know there's still a couple things to do but I'm happy with what I did so far and you saw the video where my inverter actually works so what I've got to start with these batteries, these are uh, 12 volt deep cycle batteries from Walmart. These are Everstart Max, uh, like 115 amp hour batteries. So, what I've done, I have them in series of six batteries. I have them in series, then parallel. And what that means is... I've got a cable running between the positive and the negative of each battery. And by putting them in series, what that does, it changes it from a 12 volt battery, or two 12 volt batteries, it changes it to one 24 volt battery of 115 amp hours. The amps stay the same, the volts double in series. So, 
I always say that wrong, so I have to think about it when I say it. In series, the volts increase, the amps stay the same. So, what I did first was I converted the six 12 volt batteries into three 24 volt batteries. Then I hooked them in parallel by going from the negative of each battery to each other, you know, from negative to negative to negative. The extra post on each battery after I did the series. I ran them in parallel by connecting all the negatives and then connecting all the positives of the things that were left over. What that does, running in parallel, the volts stay the same, the amps increase. So, I went from three 24 volt batteries with 115 amp hours to basically one 24 volt battery bank with 345 amp hours. So, that was all the battery wiring, just to make the battery bank. And something I will mention, um, you, I know it, these are lead acid batteries. These are not the big fancy LiPo, LiFi on whatever, uh, um, the lithium batteries. I can't afford them. If somebody doesn't like these batteries, rather than bitch about it in the comments, buy me some lithium. <laughs> and I'll start this whole thing over again. But this is what I could afford, and this will make my system work out here in my cabin. And this is not going to stay in the cabin. Um, this is just my setup and testing and making sure everything works and my learning place. Um, and we're only out here on the weekends anyway. And I have a window right there, so I'm not worried about gases building up or anything like that. Uh, they will stay, you know, vented. So, that being said, that's my battery bank. Now, what I have is one negative cable going from the battery bank up to this negative bus bar. So all of my negatives through the whole system is going to connect to this bus bar here. And I was going to do one for the positive side, but I'm not sure yet if I will. We'll have to see. Um, so I've got the negative going up. I have a 4 gauge wire coming out of the charge controller into the circuit breaker onto a positive post and then at the other end of the battery I have a positive coming out that is going up to the inverter you know you don't I don't want to overstress any particular battery so I'm trying to go from you know one point to the end point and the thing about all these cables that I made to do my series and my parallel you want to keep all of the batteries or all of the cable links the same if you can you don't want one battery working more than another battery so these have loops it would have been you know prettier to make just a short cable to go between those two posts rather than that big loop around but you prefer to keep everything equal and that way all the energy that's in these batteries travels equal distances with each other. That's the way I understood it. That's the way I did it. So, let me show you how it's set up. That's my charge controller. That right there. You can see it. Without the light doing too much to it. <laughs> uh, Okay, there is my charge controller. And what's going to happen is that 6 AWG wire sitting over there is going to come from the panels and go right in here. Coming out is to the battery bank. And what I've got that doing, I've got the negative 
side of that going to that bus bar. The positive goes into this little midnight solar baby box or whatever they called it to a 100 amp breaker and then it comes out of the breaker and goes well it goes around goes a little um, it goes to a positive post on the battery so that's how the batteries are going to be charged and I've got to go into that 100 amp breaker so that um, you know it, it protects the wires and you know protects from overcharging um, but I can also turn this off and isolate that charge controller it's not going to be connected to the batteries anymore the solar panels are going to come in and go into this breaker box um, the four panels I've got out there now are going to go on a 20 amp breaker and go up into the charge controller so that's why I've got the 20 amp breaker in there and when I hook up the other six panels I may run them separately and put them on that 30 amp breaker that's in there and then into the charge controller I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do that but that's how the charge controller is set up coming in from the solar panels going out to a hundred amp circuit breaker to the batteries end of story that will charge the batteries now this negative cable that's going up to the inverter from the bus bar has what's called a shunt that's a shunt and what that does it allows me to hook a meter up and I will be able to see the voltage and the amps and the wattage that I am using out of my system at any given moment and with the other meter hooked up to this shunt with the wires crossed you know switched it will show me what's coming in at any given time so I can compare going out versus coming in that's what the shunt is that's the only reason for having one but then that negative cable continues on up to the inverter from the bus bar now I have a positive cable coming from a post on the far battery opposite of where it's coming in at and it goes up to this switch so that I can turn on the power to the inverter or turn it off and once again that isolates the batteries from the inverter if I needed to work on the inverter or change it out I can disconnect the batteries without messing with that wires or anything I can just flip a switch and I've isolated that so it goes from the battery to the switch to a hundred amp breaker and then up to the inverter that's a 2000 watt inverter that's all the power I will ever need in this cabin the other thing that's there there's part of the system this I've only got the negative wire hooked up right now that's coming from the bus bar again everything negative goes through the bus bar um, that's a converter what that's going to do is convert my 24 volt direct current which is what's coming out of the batteries Whoops. it's going to convert the 24 volt to 12 volt and I'll bring wires out of this into a fuse block a 12 volt fuse block which is at home I forgot to bring that out with me and then that will run all of my DC lighting uh, anything I want to run with 12 volt direct current because my battery bank set up at 24 and that inverter is a 24 volt inverter I need to go back to 12 volt uh, for my lighting and everything 
So that's how you convert that back. I mean, I suppose, well, see, because I made these batteries in series, I can't come directly off the batteries. Um, if this was a 12 volt system, I could come directly off the batteries into the 12 volt fuse block. But because this is 24 volt, I have to convert it back to 12 volt. That's what that converter does. But that's it. I mean, that's, it's a lot of work, but it's relatively simple. And I think this will work for me. Um, I'm hoping if I've done something wrong, um, one of you smart people who watch my videos will tell me what I've done wrong. Um, I, when I do set up the meters and I set up the fuse block and everything and the panels, I should dig my trench this week and run all my conduit to run the wires through to set up the panels. Uh, so that'll be next week's pro, you know, video. Well, I'll be actually going live with this thing and I'll come out of my inverter there into that service panel it'll be on a 30 amp break I think it's about 15 amps coming out but uh, is the output but that'll go right into its own breaker in the service panel and we'll power the cabin from these batteries instead of the generator We'll see how that works. <laughs> but that'll be next weekend's video. I uh, hope you all like this. I hope you learned from it. Uh, I know I've had a lot of fun doing it. Alright, let me get back up a little bit. See if we can get a little bit more of an overview. Uh, but again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's long. But... I wanted to really try and explain my whole thought process and the way I put everything together uh, to try to give you guys some ideas or show you how it can be done. And I have a, in my service panel, this is coming from the generator. This 30 amp that I put in and then these are my circuits in the cabin. This is going to be for another 30 amp double pole breaker that this inverter is going to go to. And it will feed all of these circuits. So that's it. I mean, that's how I'm going to run the cabin on solar. Get in there. Let me, okay. Uh, Hopefully that's how it's going to work. I mean, you know, I don't have to run this through a service panel. It's got USB ports on it. Uh, it's got uh, electrical outlets, you know, receptacles there. I can just plug in extension cords and, you know, plug in lights and TV and all that kind of stuff. But I prefer to go through the service panel. But that's it. That's what I've done so far. Uh, remember, comment, like, share, do all those kind of things. Uh, let's see, what else? If you are subscribed, thank you. I appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed and you're watching this, you need to subscribe. Because there's going to be at least one more part to deal with the solar. And then obviously I'm still building the cabin around it. And I'll be building a power room where these things are going to be moved to outside the cabin. But the batteries and all this stuff will be in that uh, power room. The generator will be in there. Um, I'm going to hook my generator up to that charge controller to this system so that when we have days like today, when it, the, you know, all weekend there's not been a bit of sunshine. So there really wasn't much point in hooking up the solar panels because it's rained pretty much all day yesterday and today it's going to. So I wouldn't have any sun to work with anyway. But for days like that my generator will be able to charge everything and run the cabin. So this is it. Uh, 
Like I said, hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you watching. I'm out.